Hey guys, Dan here with another book review. This time I'm reviewing Lionel Shriver's We Need to Talk About Kevin. Now first off, I want to say, disclaimer, I read a different edition of this book. I just had to share this book with you. I was originally going to do a blog review of this book. I wasn't going to do a video review because... This was trending in the book community like a couple of years ago. I didn't even realize how old this book is. It was copyrighted in 2003. And I almost kind of wonder if the author, who I was under the mistaken impression that Lionel Shriver was a man. I didn't know she was a woman. But I was, you know, under the impression it was a man, and I wonder if the author had written this in response to the Columbine school shooting. But, I changed my mind and decided to go against doing the blog review, because I saw a bigger channel book reviewer mention this book, and she was under the mistaken impression that this was a horror book. It is not a horror book. While it does deal with a young teenager who kills, goes on a killing spree, I would say. You can't really classify, I mean, he, yeah, he, I guess you could say he's a serial killer because of how many he killed. And that's not spoiling the book. That's just kind of, they mentioned this in the premise. Um... The book is written in letter format from his from the 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 spree killer's mother who is Eva Cachadorian. The book starts out right away and they're written in letters and they're written in letters to her husband and you get the impression right away that this is a a very lonely sad woman who is not happy with her current place in life as she's writing these letters. And you you know right away by the tone of the letters that her husband must be dead because she speaks as if he's not there to read to actually read her letters. You get, like, small, like, she tells the story from the beginning, you know. She starts with her relationship with her husband, how they met. She, Eva is, she's a professional woman. She's a career woman, you know. She's, she decides later in life to have a child. And it's, she's kind of, at times, she's kind of ironic because she even says at one point she doesn't want to have a child due to the the need, the feeling of the, the ticking clock that a lot of people say when they, when they feel like they have to have children by a certain time. And she kind of contradicts herself because she says that's not why she wants to have a child, but she has a child anyways. She ends up regretting that, like, and this leads to another kind of turn in events that kind of goes back to the whole question, like, a lot of people who, you know, study true crime, who are into true crime, always kind of, you know, we always question this, was it nature or was it nurture, was the reason for why the person became a killer was it something that was something that could have been changed could they have been raised differently could they have been raised in a different environment under different circumstances or were they just born bad and i think that's why i think the author may have written this after the columbine incident because the author paints this picture of young Kevin Cachadorian and how we, you kind of see all these different examples where it's like, was he just born bad? Or is he just reacting to a mother that didn't really want a child when she decided to have him anyways? There's a lot of like little instances where I was 
you know, reading this, and I was like, yeah, this kid is just a pain. Like, because a lot of it, he just pushes her buttons at every little step. And there's just so many different examples of bad behavior from him as a child. I won't go into too much detail about this, because then it would be spoiling the book for you guys. And to be honest with you, a majority of the time when I was reading this book, I was thinking it was just an average three-star book. Um, it does at times, Eva's, um, her, her letters can be kind of obnoxious, slightly annoying. Um, there were times where she was kind of grating on my nerves where I really didn't even like her. And there's times, there was even a scene I remember where she's talking with her teenage son and she's kind of like very pessimistic and how she hates this and she hates that about different people and about Americans. Because if I forgot to mention, Eva has traveled the world as part of her professional career. She's experienced m many different cultures. And she doesn't think very highly of America or an American, so... And it kind of makes you wonder, was this attitude, is it something she shares with her son? Are they, like, mirrors of each other? Or did she influence him in a way to make him think these kinds of things? So that's why it, it's the kind of, it's, this is really a great book for discussion, and I know I heard that a lot of book clubs were using this book as a book discussion, because it, it does, it makes you think, it makes you want to talk about it with other people. Um, it is, like I said, it goes back to that whole nature versus nurture, and there's just so many things going on with this book. The reason, and I do have to remember that there was a um, um, film adaptation of this. I had watched the film before I had read this. Um, fortunately, I don't remember the film all that well, and I just think the film, I thought, I think I thought it was just okay. I didn't think too highly of it. And to be honest with you, the the the, the book. You cannot. You, the film could not do justice for the the emotional ups and downs and intensity of the events in this book. Um, I would classify this as a thriller, not a horror. Um, but I think it's more or less a philosophical kind of book, just because of the whole nature versus nurture thing. Um, it's, it's very, there, the reason I decided to change my rating of this book near the very end, just because you, you get more depth, more details as to what had gone on. I mean, you kind of know when you first start it, because if you read the premise, you know what it's about. But Lionel Shriver takes you in deep. She takes you in so deep by the end, I was almost in tears. It was that emotional, that striking to hear the details of what Kevin had done. And as a parent, as a spouse, the gut-wrenching emotion. That, you know, the, she, Lionel Shriver has done a good job with this book. I, I had to rate this four out of five stars because she really tugs at your heartstrings. Because, you know, you're, <laughs> you're reading this and it's just the graphic detail and the planning and the plotting and, yeah, this is a very good book. It's worth picking up. I didn't know until recently how, how many books this author had written. I was talking to my local librarian about this author, and I just didn't realize. She tends to write a lot of books that make you think, which I might go and check out some other books by her, because like I said, I've never heard any other books 
by this author but this one book. So she may be a one and done author. I mean, maybe she's just known for this one book. But um, I talked to a few other people and they said that her other books are good. They all have that kind of, you know, philosophical kind of make you think kind of catch an edge to them so I might check out some of her other works later but like I said I really enjoyed this it does really make you question nature versus nurture um, you gotta read this if you're into true crime and the whole psychology of it the behavior stuff you might really want to check this out it's well worth it I know I don't think that a lot of you guys who follow my channel are into true crime. Um, I do mention true crime things every now and then, and I don't really get a response <laughs> in the dialogue below. So, But I do enjoy true crime, and I enjoy the, the psychology behind it. So I, this, really, this really hit home. I mean, I really found this fascinating. And like I said, I did rate this 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I will have a link down below if you'd like to check out this book for yourselves. Um, U.S., U.K., and Canada, the Amazon link should work for you guys. I know it definitely works for the U.S. Um, for all other nations, I have a book depository link. And I do have to add, I appreciate all of you that have purchased things through the links. It helps out my channel as I'm not getting AdSense anymore. I was getting abs AdSense like back in the day when I early days of this channel, but then the AdSense apocalypse had happened, and I lost my AdSense. And I need 500 more subs to get it back, and of course I had to go through the whole waiting process and all of that. And I don't know if I'm that much of a goody-two-shoes to not swear or to qualify <laughs> again for AdSense, because I like to swear my channel is not for children. It's not appropriate for children. I read a lot of mature stuff. I'm not a channel that's reading young adult and children's books. So it is what it is. Um, if you came here looking for book reviews, I do mostly read a lot of comics and graphic novels, but I do read a one or two books a month, and I try to do as many regular book reviews as I can. Uh, books in similar vein to this go ahead hit that subscriber link while you're there hit that notification bell so you know when I upload that way if you're only here for the regular book reviews you can know when I upload those that's all I got for you guys till next time catch you later I'll be geeking out